15 lessons learned over the last decade of racking up well over eight figures of sales for myself and for my private clients and building a handful of businesses along the way. Now let's go ahead and get into it so that you can learn from my mistakes and lessons along the way. Number one, time is a completely made up concept. The truth is you have exactly enough for what you prioritize, nothing more and nothing less. And Parkinson's law states that a task will expand indefinitely to fit the time allotted. No one on earth has more than 24 hours in a day. So a little trick that I use is setting a timer and saying this task must be completed within X amount of time. And what's funny is just like when I was back in school, we had a week, for example, to write a paper. The paper took exactly a week to write, but frankly, it really only took about an hour because I waited all week until the night before it was due and then just cranked it out. So again, a task expands indefinitely to fit the time allotted. You have exactly enough for what you prioritize. Number two, resource allocation. Any outcome that you you want in life is going to require some input of resources, and most resources are finite. For example, time, effort, energy, blood, sweat, and tears are all things that could be required in order to achieve an outcome that you want. And here's the thing, the most successful people in the world don't necessarily have more or better resources than you or me, they're just better at allocating them. At the end of the day, you can do anything, but you can't do everything right now, and so you have to get better and better at prioritizing your resource allocation towards what's going to move the needle forward. Number three, and this is a big one, hit the like button. Now, in all seriousness, it really helps us out and I would sincerely appreciate it. But truly, number three is closer, not more. Okay, this is a matter of your focus. So many of us, and myself included, this is, again, lessons that I've had to learn through trial and error. Focus on creating more. More content, more money, more friends, more this, that, and the other. All right, but at the end of the day, ultimately what's going to create happiness and success is accomplishing what matters to you. And so instead of thinking, how do I just do more? How do I get more? It's really important that you actually clarify with specificity where it is that you're going, what it is that you're looking to achieve, and then you orient your actions towards getting closer to that. And anything that creeps in as, well, I could potentially do this, I could potentially do that, what if I did more of this, needs to be run through the lens of closer, not more. And it wasn't until I got very specific about the outcomes in my life that I desired that I was able to craft a more specific roadmap to get there. And I guarantee the fastest path to get where you want to go, it is a straight line. And so instead of doing more, 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 find your target and focus on closer, getting closer every day. Number four, less. Less is more reliable. Now this one was taught to me by a guy named Nick Peterson who is a genius when it comes to thinking through complex systems. You see, most people assume that components of a complex system are additive, right? So think about this. A business, it's a complex system. Marketing, sales, delivery, ops, finance, team management, customer experience, all these things, right? It is a complex system and each component is interdependent, but they are not additive. They are multiplicative. So meaning if we have anything less than one, meaning 90%, it's 0.9. 90% times 90% is actually 81%. So if we have a complex system with just two pieces, okay, each of them 90% effective, then the total system reliability is 81%. So what that means is every time we add a component to a complex system that is anything less than 100% effective, we actually draw the total system reliability down. And what that means for you in a practical sense is that rather than adding more things to what you're doing, it would actually behoove you to look at, is there anything I can possibly do to remove unnecessary components and then look at how do I bring up the efficiency of my least effective component that is impossible to eliminate. Again, don't add, but actually remove. And in doing so, you'll simplify the process and you will create a heck of a lot more system reliability. Number five, on either side of a peak is always a valley, no matter what. 
And this is a lesson that life has continued to teach me over and over and over again. And so I have a strong hunch that it has probably been trying to teach you this too. And so it would behoove you as well as myself to really let this one sink in. Instead of focusing always on how do I increase my earning capacity? How do I increase my potential? How do I increase my output? Understand that on either side of that peak is always going to be a valley. In fact, the last couple years have shown this really, really well with the recession that we're currently in at the time of filming. Okay, there's always going to be a valley. And so instead of just focusing on how do I raise the ceiling of my potential, how do I raise the floor so that if I fall, well, when I fall, because it will always happen that I fall less and less each time. Because if you can raise the floor, your rolling average over time will be a lot better. Again, either side of a peak, always a valley. Focus more on raising the floor of the valleys rather than the height of the peak. And over time, your rolling average will continue to grow. Number six, working every day is in fact not a smart choice. Okay, when I first started off in my first online business, I thought, wow, this is so awesome. I don't have to clock into work every day now. I can actually work anytime I want from anywhere in the world. While that was true, the opposite was also true. Because I could work anytime from anywhere, I began working all the time from everywhere. And that was a recipe for burnout. In fact, while I started off strong, I ended up crashing and burning really, really bad. Okay, burnout, wanted to just give up, throw in the towel and go back to a job. Now, thankfully, I didn't, but that was only because I had a great mentor at the time that was like, Dude, you need to take weekends off, okay? It is sacred, even in the Bible, that you have a day off each week. That is for a reason. You need to have time to relax, recharge, reconnect with those in your life that are important to you. Refill your cup so that you have something to pour out. That will actually increase your effectiveness by a ton. Because thinking back to one of the previous lessons, again, Parkinson's Law, a task expands indefinitely to fit the time allotted. I guarantee if you're working seven days a week right now, you could get the same amount done in five days a week and you will be a lot happier as you do. Number seven, the grass is greener where you water it. Grass is not greener on the other side, my friend. And this has been one that, again, I've had to learn multiple times, <laughs> multiple times. The grass is just greener where you water it. What you put intention, effort, energy into is going to grow. It's just how the world works. And so instead of focusing on what other people have, what other people are doing and comparing yourself to the social media narrative where spoiler alert, of course, people only post things that look great. They post their highlights and then you inevitably compare their highlights to your lowlights because you live with yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. I know you do it because I do it too. That's just how we are as people. But remember, the grass is greener where you water it. So focus on yourself, your improvement, and don't judge yourself so much in contrast to other people. Number eight, courage precedes confidence. Okay, if we had to wait until we were confident in what we're doing to do it in the first place, we'd get nothing done. At the end of the day, courage does not mean acting with no fear. It means acting in spite of the fear that we feel. And anytime we want to do something new in life, it's going to take a degree of courage to actually do it in the first place. You see, confidence comes from a track record of positive results. Over time, when you get good results, you get confident and that will propel you further and further down the road. But you have to start with courage to do the scary thing, to allow yourself to suck in the short term, to put in that sweat equity until you have a track record that will substantiate the confidence that will keep you going. Number nine, opportunities don't wait around for you. They just go to the next person who is ready to take advantage of them. So when a big, hairy, scary, exciting opportunity comes up and you feel like, man, I don't know if I'm quite ready for this yet. Reference lesson number eight, okay? Have a little bit of courage, take it on. At the end of the day, if you fail, cool. As long as you don't quit, it's just a learning lesson and you get right back up and you take advantage of the next opportunity. There have been so many times in my life where an opportunity came up that I felt like I wasn't yet worthy of or capable enough to take advantage of. And so I passed it up. And then now looking back, I kick myself because frankly, you learn along the way. One of my mentors that has really stuck into my mind used to tell me, Grant, just go as far as you can see. And when you get there, you'll see further. So when that big opportunity comes up next time, just grab it. 
Grab it, go for it, learn along the way, and I promise you will be very happy that you did. Number 10, delay is the number one dream killer. The longer you wait to start something, ultimately the less time you have for compounding to take place. And here's the thing, compounding is quite possibly the most powerful force in our universe as it relates to getting you what you want. And so this quick example here actually shows you the power of compounding. So in this context, Jack actually starts investing just $200 per month between the age of 25 and 35. So over the course of that time frame, he invests a total of 24,000. Now Jill actually waits to start investing. So she starts investing when Jack is done. And mind you, he never contributes anything more to this. Now Jill continues to invest $200 per month between the ages of 35 all the way up until 65 meaning Jill's total investment totals 72,000. But just based on Jack having started first, even though he stops and even though he contributed a fraction of what Jill did, the law of compound interest has propelled his portfolio value far beyond hers. So I hope this illustrates the point that delay is the number one dream killer. The faster you can just start when you have a good idea or a good opportunity, the more upside potential you have. Number 11, intention is important, but all that matters to the scoreboard is action. Now, I'm not saying that positive visualization, meditation, and all of these things are not helpful. They absolutely are because you need to believe in yourself enough to take the action in the first place to get results. However, you can't just stop with intention. You can't just stop with manifesting and expect anything to happen. You've got to do the work. A lot of times that's going to be uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters to the scoreboard is action. So you got to do it. And I can tell you from personal experience that if you just get in the habit of taking action in spite of how you feel over time as positive results stack up and they build your confidence, it's going to feel really good to continue. Number 12, if you are the smartest person in the room, my friend, you're in the wrong room. Now, this lesson first came about for me when I was actually uh, taking part in different coaching programs and masterminds when I was building my first uh, fitness consulting business way back years ago. I wanted to be the one that was posting the wins and the testimonials and you know I was just doing great, right? But operating from this lens actually kept me from learning nearly as much. And so while I was trying to be the smartest person, those who were okay with being dumb dumb in the eyes of others, right, actually ended up far surpassing me. There were uh, classmates, so to speak, that started from the same place, but ended up way further beyond me because I wanted to be the smartest person in the room. But this lesson has continued to crop up over time. And in the most recent context, it's been really illuminating as it comes to building our team at Free Life Funding, which is our point of sale platform. Now, here's the thing. What's really helped me is thinking through my hiring decisions from the lens of I want generals, not soldiers. It's better to be the dumbest person in the room with world-class generals, okay, than it is to be the genius with a thousand hands. Because at the end of the day, if you rely on only your thinking to get things done and then just let other people execute, you can only grow to the level that you can think. And frankly, no one person will ever be as smart as the collective. Number 13, there's no such thing as maintaining. You're either green and growing or you are ripe and rotting. If you are not consistently pushing forward in one aspect of your life or another, I can pretty much guarantee you that's going to lead to depression. This is just a natural thing in our universe. We need to grow. Look at nature. A tree never wakes up one day and says, you know what? I think, I think I'm good. I'm just going to stop. This is the right height for me. It's just a universal law that anything in nature will continue to grow to the point at which it begins to die. And so you can keep yourself on that upward trajectory if you just remember there's no such thing as maintaining. So ask yourself, am I green and growing or ripe and rotting? Number 14, you do not get out of life what you want. You get what you are committed to. And commitment means saying something and actually doing it and then reassessing after the fact not second-guessing your 
actions throughout the process, but I'm doing this and you do it. You commit to it, okay? Because we don't get what we want. Nobody's gonna show up and just hand you the things that you want in life. You're only gonna get what you're committed to because tough times are gonna come. It's inevitable. And you have to have the conviction and the commitment to work through them because progress comes through pushing through your comfort zone, not from staying within it. And that brings us to number 15. This one's a doozy. So really let this one sink in. The discomfort of rejection and failure fades a lot faster than the pain of regret. Ultimately, you are going to fail in life. You're going to face rejection. And yes, it hurts. It's wildly uncomfortable. I know that. However, the pain of regret, meaning I wish I would have done this, but I didn't. That pain takes a lot longer to go away. So just do it. That thing that scares you, that big opportunity that you don't know if you're ready for yet, that you don't feel like you deserve yet, just do it, okay? Because worst case scenario, you fail. You face some rejection. But as long as you don't quit, you never fully lose. As long as you just use it as a learning lesson and you continue on, eventually you're gonna make it. Now, I would love to hear which of these 15 lessons has resonated most with you. So drop it down in the comments. I would love to see it. I will be sure to reply to you. Thanks for tuning into this one and I will see you in the next one.